Welcome back. We were very productive last time around. We found the moiety. We got our prison book back. And we were released from our temporary prison to finally see a little bit more of the uh, inside of the big tree. But I will keep you in suspense for a little bit longer because we were given a uh, journal. And while I read the uh, note um, in the front of it, I did not read the rest of it. Which we will do now. What? Atrus is the only person in this book, in this game who uses books normally. Gen only writes on one side of a page, and uh, <laughs> Catherine is holding the book sideways while writing in it. It's kind of uh, funny to me. Catherine's handwriting was by far the most difficult to write to, to read in the. Uh, original game, and uh, despite being actual handwriting now, rather than a font, um, it is much easier to um, read here. I still think it would have been a good idea to have an option to bring up the text in a, like a dialogue or pop-up or whatever, to show it just in a, like a regular screen font for people who have uh, some uh, visual disabilities or um, simply can't r read cursive very well which is fairly common nowadays okay let's see what Catherine writes she's also the only one who does not date her journal ent entries so we have no idea when any of this happened it's been one week since I linked to Riven and I'm still reeling from the changes I've witnessed even before my eyes could adjust, the smell of my homeland embraced me. The sweet, salt air was instantly familiar, but the scene that soon resolved was not. As I stood there, struggling to make sense of what I was seeing, a violent clang sounded and bars appeared before me. It was then that I must have been darted, for my memory after is cloudy. A Rivenese man, shabbily dressed in militaristic attire, was shouting something at me. He seemed to be attempting to speak Dunny, but his grasp of the language was so poor that I could not make out his words. And then the world went dark. It seems like Catherine, arriving on uh, Riven, had a very similar uh, experience as we did. Perhaps even a run-in with Cho, or one of Gen's men anyway. Many voices passed, until at last I awoke to a familiar face. Etty, after all this time, she's still as warm and kind as ever. And yet the years have clearly wounded her, as they've wounded everyone whose world became a prison when Gen was trapped here. Everything is tinged with pain and loss, even Etty's bright smile, though she does her best to hide it. A desperate urgency squelched by unuttered fears seethes beneath her cordial veneer. When Atrus and I left Gen here all those years ago, I was haunted by visions of what had become of my people and how they might have come to suffer under his rule, but the injustices I imagined were nothing compared to the atrocities that have actually come to pass. The following is a chronicle of what I have learned, a record of all that has happened, should I no longer be here to tell it. quite sure what this is a drawing of. Seems to have some daggers in the middle there. But, yeah, not quite clear. Is that just a bush? This could just be the view from the the uh, Lincoln spot, so maybe this is meant to represent the fissure or the telescope or something. 
The Moiri. It seems the confrontation that led to Gen's entrapment on Riven was witnessed by some of the Rivenese. But their interpretation of the event was skewed. No doubt to Gen's overinflated views of himself. Atris and I had hoped that stripping him of his ability to link to other worlds might lead people to conclude that his claims of godhood were false. But it appears the opposite has come to pass. If Gen was a god, and we had vanquished him, then we must be greater gods. It was thus assumed. Uh, that is not what I did. It was thus assumed that my absence was only temporary, and that I would surely return one day to set the world right again. Thus the Moiri, the name they adopted after Gen's disparaging use of the term, were born sworn enemies of Gen and devotees of me. I had no inkling of this misconception about myself until two days ago, though in hindsight it makes perfect sense given the way I've been treated. For their part, they naturally assumed an omniscient deity might well be aware of their own divine status, so there was no need to inform me. I only finally pieced it together during a recent underground gathering, where they reenacted their version of the story of my life, a riveting tale that culminated with the confrontation between Atris, myself, and Gen at the edge of the fissure. The events had been exaggerated to such grandiose proportions that I found it hard at times to suppress my laughter. And yet, this myth has also given them the courage to stand against Gen, and the hope that they might someday be delivered from the relentless inhumanities of his author authoritarian rule. Even so, the fact that I am the one who has been cast as their savior, an omnipotent being who would one day return to Riven, overthrow Gen, and lead them to a new paradise is deeply unsettling. I would do anything to free my people from this hellish existence, but... I am not who they think I am. How, though, can I dissuade them from this notion without also crushing their hopes? As Gen's power grew, so did the Moiri. And in order to evade his persecution, for he would wipe them all out in an instant if he could, they had to become more and more adept at concealing themselves. They make use of a network of caves that so far he has failed to discover but I fear it's only a matter of time before they're found out. We see a drawing here. Of what appears to be the secret entrance to the linking room. Actually, it says that. Secret passage to the rebel linking room. Um, and it shows... The, uh, the cave with the blue lit things, which I guess are called bolu. Three bolu must be lit and it indicates which one. So if you haven't found that yet, this will tell you about it. If you manage to make the connection between this and that cave. Which you may or may not do. Um, I wonder if this drawing was added in later, or at least the writing was, because at the time of this entry, this wouldn't have been a linking room. There might have been a secret passage there, but no linking book yet. Also, is this even Catherine's handwriting? I mean, nobody else here would be able to write in English, so it kind of has to be. But she's writing in like all caps there. So I guess it looks a little bit different than her cursive. Further jeopardizing their existence is the fact that the Moiri absolutely refuse to sever their ties with those who have sided with Gen. The two factions thus live together in surprising harmony, their overarching sense of cultural unity appearing to outweigh the schism, at least for now. I heard today that Father and Enant were inducted into Gen's labor force. I so longed to see them, but a dimness shrouded Eddie's face so abruptly when I asked of them that it let me, left me hesitant to press the matter further. I must know the truth, eventually, but I fear the news will not be good. 
From the moment of their inception, the moiety have sought to disrupt Ghent's plans at every turn. Sabotaging his constructions, stealing from his precious stockpiles, and keeping an ever-watchful eye on his every move. They shroud themselves with dark coverings, and delight in the fact that their enemies are often frightened by their wraith-like appearance, and their almost preternatural ability to wreak havoc without detection or consequence. It was in the course of one of these forays that I was fortuitously rescued when I first linked to Riven. I shudder to think what might have become of me had that scout not been there to intervene. Gen will certainly be hunting for me now. No doubt furious at his guard's failure to detain me. He must be even angrier, though, at the loss of the linking book he surely assumes I brought with me. That I was deceived into linking into Riven without a way back is a bitter yet fortunate fact, for it may well have meant the death of us all had a path back to Dunny fallen into his destructive hands. When he finally discovers that I came here empty-handed, he'll be angrier still. That is, some consolation at least. Some more drawings here of the daggers and a person that, that might be the Wark effigy in the jungle? Not quite sure. I've glimpsed the final breath of a dying age. A tiny blade cuts the void. The wide hole divided. Again and again, dipped in black. The nib drips red. The art of genocide. Today I ventured above ground to see for myself what has become of the island. I hoped it wouldn't be as bad as the moiety had reported. It was worse. Having lived with it for so long, the Rivenese have become in, in, inured to the steady decay around them. But I was devastated. As we wound our way through the underbrush, I found myself once again breathing in my youth, the ocean air transporting me back in a matter of seconds. But as my eyes again took hold, the warmth of those memories vanished and I was left with nothing but numbness. We had reached a bluff, a bluff that had not been there the last time I visited my home. Riven, which was once one island, has split into five distinct pieces that have since drifted apart at an astonishing rate. Four of these have been claimed by Gen as his ex exclusive domain. Only those who have sworn their loyalty to him are ever allowed access to them. From my vantage point at the edge of the trees, I could see three of them, now blighted with Gen's monomaniacal constructions. These islands are closely guarded and pose great personal risk to the moiety though that hasn't kept them from doing whatever they can to thwart Gen's endeavors there. And she drew the islands she could see. I'm assuming she was on Jungle Island. She could see Temple Island, Crater Island, and Survey Island. The fourth island I could not see, as it has crept away to some distance and now lies concealed by fog. The Moiri ha said that Gen originally governed from this small island, living and working in a protected space he built for himself atop the stump that remains where the great tree used to stand. The only surviving forest is located here, on the largest island, where the village also remains. This island was ostensibly intended to be the province of the people, but it too has been irrevocably, irrevocably marred by Gen's oppressive intrusions. Gen can not is... or Gen can rot, possibly? crossed out. Words fall. Brittle ba brown leaves masquerading as green. Should never have held. Life's both bloomed and as yet unseated. I feel nothing today. I am an outcast among outcasts. The diaspora of a dying world. Not much of a diaspora considering it's just Catherine who left, I guess. Despite my repeated protestations, the moiety continue to treat me differently, their desperate need precluding any dissuasion from the belief that I am some sort of messiah come to save them. They misconstrue my every move as a validation of their fate, of their faith, sorry, whispering of how I walk the islands, bold and unafraid, mistaking my outrage at the island's devastation for bravery. But I am afraid, for I know something that the moiety do not 
the underlying reason for the island's accelerated decay. Gen wrote this world. And so it will fail, as all of Gen's ages ultimately fail. I must make the moiety understand this, but I cannot talk to Eddie. There were brief moments soon after my arrival when my divine status was forgotten and I was simply Catron again, but they are almost non-existent now. There is one person, however, who seems immune to these fallacious notions. Nila. Her gaze has never faltered whenever I have dared hint at the uncomfortable truth. I feel I could trust her to bear the full brunt of it. Gen is making books! How did I not know this until now? Aters and I knew he would likely attempt it, as he has adopted the paranoid practice of writing all of the necessary materials into his ages. He has been exploiting the natural resources and the people of Riven as fodder for his mad pursuit to further his colonialist ideals. Thankfully, it sounds as if he has not yet succeeded. As painful as it's been, the fact that I have returned to Riven at this crucial juncture is fortuitous. The age is crumbling, my people are suffering, and if Gen succeeds in securing his freedom, other worlds will suffer the same. The moiety are looking to me. I may only be mortal, but I have to do something. We see drawings of the uh, Starfisher telescope and the uh, steam pipe that powers it. It's been a long time since my last entry. There's much to tell. It was hard to recognize, but I found the Starfisher. It is located on what Gen refers to as his Temple Island. Though the Moiety prefer to use the Rivenese world Alapo, which means water pool. They have thus taken to referring to the void itself as Alatuan, Pool of Stars. It is the very fissure that allowed Atris and me to escape this age without leaving a linking book behind us, though it has since been sealed with a skin of heavy iron. Several derelict devices from that time remain mounted to its surface, including a hatch with a window viewpoint, windowed viewport, a large telescope, and the mechanical lift that was used to install it, the combination to which was acquired by the moiety long ago. And it seems she wrote the combination down in uh, Rivenese numbers. And um, I think that is six, uh, three? Five, not as adept at reading these as I am, the <laughs> Rivenese numbers. Uh, that's nine. Um, that would be eight. Three. Six again. Um, that's one. Five and... Seven. So this is the combination we need to unlock the control panel, which is sketched here by the telescope. We don't need to take a picture of it because we can take this journal with us. In the early days, the Moiety briefly considered reopening the fissure. Thankfully, they decided against it. Had they attempted it back then, the results might well have been catastrophic. Were they to do so today, it would certainly mean the end of Riven. I am told that in the days immediately following Gen's confinement on Riven, he attempted to determine the feasibility of navigating the stars beneath the fissure, for he had seen the mist book fall from Aegis's hands into that very same space. To this end, he sacrificed several poor souls, alleged transgressors of the law, by throwing them into the hatch so he could observe their fate. It is said that they did not die, but what becomes of them remains a mystery. And that original fissure is no longer alone. New ruptures have appeared in recent years at various locations around the islands. In some instances, the moiety were able to glimpse the breaches before Gen and his minions moved in to contain them. Their descriptions support my suspicion that the forces that are tearing Riven apart are more than merely geological. More troubling, however, is that Gen is not simply containing these rifts, but is somehow using them to travel between the islands, 
and that he has also reportedly devised a way to harvest the energies from the expanse for some as yet unknown purpose. How like him to wantonly exploit for his own selfish gain that which he does not understand. The star field beneath the fissure is not as it seems. It is a gentle space, as hospitable to life as a flowing river. That is how Atreus described his brief time within the expanse before he linked out, leaving his mist book adrift within it. He was never able to conclude upon its nature, but I cannot help but feel that there must be some greater... Numa? Behind it? I think that says Numa. Something I should have mentioned earlier. One of the colossal blades that appeared in the course of our escape from Riven, the great dagger that stands at the end of the fissure, has been adopted by the moiety as the emblem of their struggle. They have their own explanation as to how it came to be, of course. But their choice is more apt than they know, as that dagger, along with the other blades, was a manifestation of my rage at the desecration that Gen had already wrought upon my world. I haven't told the moiety that I eroded it into this age, as I feared I would only fuel their overestimation of me, but I can't deny it pleases me to have inadvertently provided them with such a fitting symbol for their cause. My limited encounters with Gen's followers have been discouraging. Whenever I've attempted to engage them, they've fled from me. I heard an interesting tale from the moiety last night, which may help to explain this. Soon after we trapped Gen on Riven, he claimed that it was he who had been responsible for the Great Blades, summoning them as a preemptively punitive reminder of the obeisance he expected. In the village circles, it is told that this act marked the beginning of a period of restitution, at the end of which, provided they had proven their devotion to him, they would be delivered into a new and better existence. I will continue my attempts to intervene on their behalf. The cage is finally filled. Gen is free! My sources have confirmed that Gen has managed to create a functional linking book. In fact, he had done so before my arrival, but kept this accomplishment so well hidden that only his closest acolytes were aware of it. In keeping with his callous regard for the world he creates, he has simply named this age 233. It is not yet known where he has written others. I have also just learned that years ago a moiety scout managed to steal a book that was an early failure that Gen had intended to destroy. It was largely complete, but did not work. I wasn't told about it until now, because they thought it was useless. Gen struggled for decades, but he could never get a conventional linking book to work. Then one day he began construction on a cumbersome mechanical solution, a complex array of devices designed to harness the energies of the starry expanse and use them to suppress his book's in inherent flaws. The design phase was chaotic and often dangerous. The moiety fell off tr tell of tremendous explosions, as Gen sought to contain and wield forces that he knew little to nothing about. But he is nothing if not determined, and eventually he was able to use this enormous crutch to link to another age. I can't deny his brilliance, but it is an abominable solution, brutish and overwrought. And all but entirely unnecessary. I have studied the partially burned book that the moiety took from him. Although he sought retribution for the affront, he appears to have been otherwise untroubled by the theft, no doubt assuming the book would be useless in the moiety's hands. But I can see what he could not, or what they could not. The book may yet be salvageable. The age the book describes is wholly unsuitable as a home for the moiety, but I think it can be modified. I will dream. And we see some drawings that, I guess, represent her dreams and the uh, age that we are now in. The big tree, the moon overhead, the birds. And yes, if you've read the Book of Atreus, you will know that dreaming is often how uh, Catherine comes up with her ideas for writing ages. I have nearly finished writing the Moiety's Age. The world is described as harsher and more desolate than they are used to, but they should be able to sustain themselves there. But we'll need a second book. Gen has been spending most of his time on 233 lately, so the danger is less, but getting into his lab will still be difficult. The coming collapse weighs the air. 
Blurring my vision both day and night. We must act soon. Drawing up the starfisher. And I guess a giant holding the giant dagger at the end of it? I'm not sure. Success! We have secured a second book. Though I worry that Gen will miss it and deduce our plans before we're ready. The descriptive book I've prepared as a refuge for the rebels is useless unless I can find a way to correct its inherent flaws. Gen's massive machine mainly functions to manipulate the energies within the expanse. It serves its purpose, but its success seems unwarranted. The Rivenese have long used crystalline substrates as an elegant means to manipulate light. If I could just find the right material. Last night's dreams have delivered me a perilous plan. I will write this substance into the new Moiety Age. More drawings, perhaps, of this substance she's talking about. If we could temporarily access Gen's apparatus, we could use our book to link to this new age and search for the crystal. Someone would then have to carry the book back to safety once the link was made. If it fell into Gen's hands, all would be lost. When Gen links to 233, one of his acolytes always remains to shut down the device. We'll have to get him before he can do so, which means we'll have only one chance before they're alerted to our presence. Everything is ready. I've written the material into the New Age, and I have prepared the second linking book as a return path to Riven. Of course, it too suffers from the same deficiencies as all of Gen's books, so it won't work unless it's augmented. Once I'm in the New Age, I'll have to locate the crystal and adapt it to heal the gateway images, which should render the book functional. I can then use the second linking book to return to Riven with more of this material. It's risky, but if it all goes well, the Moiety, and any others who, can, who we can convince to join them, will finally have an escape. I can't help but laugh at the absurdity of this plan. I sound like Atrus. Should I fail to return, it will likely mean the end of my life, but my only real fear is for my people. Everyone assures me they have complete faith that I will accomplish my task and lead them to a better world. That's the fulfillment of the prophecy, after all. But underneath, they are just as tense and fearful as I am. What will become of them if I do not return? Will they perish here on Riven? Or attempt to follow me through this new book to an unknown fate? I don't know what to tell them. Against all odds, it is done. We have already evacuated most of our members to this new age, which the Moiri have named Tay. The world is more beautiful than I would anticipated, so I am pleased. The Rivenese have been liberated at last. They stand beneath the open sky, unafraid, dazzled by their freedom. They're happy. But there's still much to be done. The age is still vulnerable. The only way to completely protect it from again is to destroy the book, books once everyone is safely in Tay. I'm hesitant to bring this up to the moiety until they've had a chance to acclimate themselves to the new world, as it would mean they would be forever exiled from the only home they've ever known. Nor am I eager to sever my own connection, and my only path back to my life and family on mist. But for the greater good, it must be done. For the moment we're safe, but our activities could arouse Gen's suspicion at any moment. We cannot delay. I will return to Riven tomorrow to resume my attempts to persuade the remaining holdouts to join the others in Tay. For now, though, I must rest. And that's the end of the journal. We can only assume that she returned to Riven and was then captured by Gen's men. Putting a bit of a dent in their plans that had been going so well. Until that point... One thing that uh, the journal does not answer, and nor does the game as a whole, is why did Catherine come to Riven at all? when she knew of the risks. We know from later materials that she was lured here by Ceres and Akadar as part of their plan to steal the art from Atrus. Kind of 
weird to think that if Sirius and Akinar hadn't done that, then Gen may yet have succeeded in his attempts to break free from Riven. All right. We finally get to see the inside of this big tree. It seems like the outer shell is almost... I wonder if that's natural or if that's something they've constructed around the branches. Hole in the top to let in some light. And guards. Guards everywhere. So I guess we better not try anything. I can definitely see... Uh, the influence of Rivenese style of building here. Similar kinds of like mud huts set in the side of the tree. And they do not want us to pay anyone a visit here. I cannot tell you how excited I was to uh, finally walk out of here. And yes, there's not a lot to do here. You can just walk around and look around, but... That's good enough for me. It's all I really wanted. Is to see what this looked like from the inside, and now I finally can. There's some kind of weird structure in the middle here. Covered in moiety knives. Very peculiar. Appears to have a window on the top. I guess the uh, crystal we saw on the linking book in Riven that took us here is that um, material that Catherine talked about that fixes the uh, problems with Gen's book. It seems very similar to um, the crystal we're carrying around, although I don't think it is the same. Because, after all, we did try to look at uh, Gen's linking book through this crystal, and it didn't do anything to fix that. Um, nothing to look at here. I guess they have no further use of invisible paint once you're here. Um, but I think the two crystals are related. Catherine spoke of the Rivenese having always used these kinds of crystals to manipulate light. They're probably similar to, like, polarizing lenses or something along those lines. And that also explains why she was able to come up with this idea. Um, that looks like Catherine. Who, uh is being offered some fruit. I don't know if she knows that they put this here. I don't know if this was here before or after she got captured. Either way, I don't think she's happy about it. Must be pretty hard to come back to the people you grew up with and suddenly find you're the Lisan al Gaib. They've pinned all of their hopes on her, and she is trying as best she can to help them. She at least gave her gave her uh, people this new home, and hopefully we can get the rest of them in here as well. Doesn't look like there's anything on this side. No going that way. Um, also, I guess that, you know, the uh, Mohiri venture to Riven, even before they lived on Tay, they would venture in, uh, like, out of their hiding places in this kind of outfit, and apparently scared the bejeebas out of the villagers, which I guess is why they have lookouts and drawbridges, because 
of the rebel incursions. Even if they are targeted again and not at the villagers themselves. This structure is definitely important looking. Looks like there's an elevator here that's controlled by a winch. Sir, would you mind just lowering us? Ah, yes. Thank you. I have no idea if these people understand English. They probably don't. So, still doesn't hurt to be, uh, to be nice. Alright, what is this? Another book. A linking book. Back to the um, the cave with the animal symbols. Wait, how is this book working? There's no crystal on it, nor is it powered by Gen's apparatus. Did Catherine manage to create a functional linking book once she got here? Seems unlikely. Wait a second. That window in the top, we saw it before. Is that the crystal material? Is that the same material as the crystal and it just works because light shines through it onto the book? That's ingenious. I, this is a change I actually really, really like. Um, not only because it's kind of nice, nicely shown, a nice little bit of world building here with the roof that's very easy to miss. Um, I didn't see it the first time, how this was supposed to work. Um, but it also just kind of ties everything together with the crystals and how they work and our own crystal altering light, like we don't have to hold it up to the symbols, up against the symbols. And also, the way Gen's device was altered, I purposely haven't really mentioned it up until now, we'll see it when we uh, head back to 233, is that um, in the original game it's just kind of like like these sort of electrode looking things around the book, whereas in this version it's very clearly like channeling some sort of light onto the book, which suggests that Gen's solution is also optical in nature. Much like the the book window, and indeed this uh, this version. So I, I really like how that's tied all tied together. Alright. Farewell, Tay. Nice, we finally got to see more of you. But we have a evil despot to trap. Um, looks like this is still open. Wonder if it's manually reset by somebody or if it's timed. Even this little detail of there being a window here to shine light onto the book crystal. It all like fits in with this idea that the fixes to the books are light based. You can actually see that again try to uh, burn this book. Would have uh, pointed out if not for uh, the fact that I accidentally linked through. I wonder, like in the original game, when you find when you open the furnace in Gen's office, there's a book in it, and we see the furnace in this game at the bottom of the the balcony in Crater Island, but there's no book in it. So I wonder if they like 
If this was the book that was in it and they took it, that'd be kind of funny. Is it still possible to move this around? No, it really just does not want to. And it links you <laughs> when you do that. Okay. It was kind of finicky before uh, the latest patch. I will admit to that to get it to fit right. And it's very easy to conclude that the book just doesn't work if you don't know anything about this game. Uh, we return here. So we cannot go back to the tree, unfortunately. Oh, there's the other uh, platform we saw, and the boat that we used to get over to the tree, which has a little uh, restraint in it. That's pretty clear that you're standing in that if you're playing in VR. In screen mode, not so much. We can... Continue without uh, worry, though. We will not be captured a second time. And a linking book, including book window, has been uh, placed here. Presumably fire marble light is enough to make that work. There is no telling what that looks like. I don't know if it's actually just black or if it's too dark to see. <laughs> I really like this effigy of Gen. It, it, it captures him very well, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, this book uh, was there in the original game or, uh, immediately when you link in, but you will get darted before using it. The uh, the remake removes it on your initial visit, probably to uh, prevent you from just like running through here and trying to click on it before the cutscene triggers. Would have also made sense for them to remove it temporarily to make sure that they could capture me. I guess the. This is meant to remind you where you are going using this book. Well, the other book didn't do that, so... Well, I guess maybe it did that with all the daggers on the hut that surrounded it. Anyway... We return here. We have our um, prison book back. Plus a bunch of background story from uh, Catherine. So, with the prison book in hand, I think it is time we should return to again and give him what he wants. Hopefully he will use it. I guess the easiest way will be to use the expanse, assuming the warp is still open. Um, no, it's this way. It fortunately is. I guess Gen's men do not want to hinder us too much, considering they want us to come back with the linking book. Um, elevator's not here. That makes sense, because last time I left it up there. Or, no, down there, actually, because I went back to the... submarine last, I think. Fortunately, there's a call button. There is one remaining mystery. 
about this whole uh, recruitment process of the moiety. They gave us a spyglass. They gave us symbols to find. But one of those symbols required us to go to Prison Island and look at it from afar. The only way to get there is using the domes. And um, while it sounds the reason the moiety know the, uh, the code, um, whoever they're trying to recruit probably wouldn't. So did they just expect the uh, recruits to uh, to guess the symbol, to swim to the island, or to guess the animal symbol? Or did they leave them a hint? They left them a hint. <laughs> yeah, something I did not notice on my original playthrough. Somebody in the comments of my videos pointed it out. Thank you for that. Yes, the Moiety have in fact marked the correct symbol on every dome. Or at least on this one. I don't know if it's on every dome. I guess we'll check. Make would make sense if they did it on every dome. For their own use, but perhaps also for the uh, So uh, for the recruits, so that's kinda helpful if you no longer remember what symbol to use. I think it's the cat's eye looking one. This one, yes. For this island. But yeah, since I knew all the symbols, I never bothered to look at the domes with the, the magnifying glass, so... Keep calling it that, even though it is not a magnifying glass. So, um... We will head over to give Gen what he wants, the linking book, in the next video.